Let us do question four. Um, question four says that information for completing the general journal for April 2016. On the 5th of April, we had Dela Core a creditor, charged the overdue account of the business with 15% interest for four months. The business owes 5,100 to Dela Core. Dela Core is a creditor as they specified. And you need to remember that interest on a liability is an expense. You will take that 5,100, multiply it by 15%, and then multiply it because they said 15% per annum. Per annum means what well, the answer that you got there is per year. You still need to apportion it to four months because you don't need interest for the whole year. You only need interest for four months. You will therefore multiply that by four divided by 12, and you will get 255. That means you will debit interest expense and then credit Dilaco. Because Dilaco is also a creditor, you will credit creditor's control. Let's move on. On the seventh, charge 10% per annum interest on outstanding account of M. Moleki at data. His account of 1,700 is six months overdue. Interest on an asset will be income. And we know that here M. Moleki is a debtor and debtor, debtors control, or debtors fall under assets. When we calculate interest on that, they said it's pay, you must pay attention to what the interest is. Indeed, when it says uh, per year, you must just know it's for a year. And sometimes it's per month. And that's where you see people multiplying it by six divided by 12. And that would be wrong because the interest is per month. So whatever you calculate it, you just multiply it by six because your interest will be per month. But here it's per year. We need to change it to months. You first calculate interest on that, which is 10% of 1,700. And then you apportion it to six because you want six. Out of this 12 months, you only want six. You'll multiply by six and divide it by 12. It'll give you interest, which will be 85. That A5 is interest income. However, it increases what the debtor owes you. M Moleki will owe us more. So you debit that it's an asset and M Moleki is a debtor. The amount will be 85 Rand and then you credit your interest income. Income increases on the credit side. Okay, you did that in grade, um, grade nine. You should be fine with that. Let's move on. It says on the ninth, the bookkeeper erroneously posted vehicles repairs amount of 7,000 to the vehicle's account in the general ledger. They were supposed to debit the repairs there and then credit vehicles. Because um, they, they debited vehicles and they credited bank or creditors control. So we need to, the credit is fine. The problem is the debit. I've done this in the previous two videos. Check them out. To correct this, because they erroneously debited vehicles, we're going to credit vehicles and debit the correct account, 
which is repairs. You will just give it the repairs and credit vehicles. Um, I don't know why I wrote N there. Yes, N is for nominal vehicles. It's B, which is for balance sheet or the financial position section. And that'll be it. Okay. On the 13th, an invoice for 1,300 received from Tony, um, I mean, Tiny Torts Limited was incorrectly recorded in Tins Limited account. In essence, we debited Tins Limited and credited sales, which is wrong. The only thing that is wrong there is the debit part, which is Teens Limited. So we are going to credit Teens Limited because, um, wait, 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 wait. They said we received an invoice. Oh no, we are not issuing an invoice. Um, My bad there. Since we are receiving an invoice, it means we are the ones that bought on credit. If we purchase on credit, we debit whatever we bought, and in this case, it doesn't look like the debit was wrong. We credit whoever we bought it from, which is a creditor, and that is a liability. That's why we credit it. That is why it increases on the credit side. But the credit entry was wrong because the credit entry went to Teens Limited instead of Tiny Torts. That's the person we bought from. How do I know we bought? Because they said we received an invoice. When you buy on credit, you receive an invoice. When you sell on credit, you issue an invoice. Here we received. So be careful as to who is receiving. If the invoice is received by the customer, it means we issued it and the customer is a debtor. If the invoice was received by us, it means that it was issued by the creditor and Obviously, we are the customer there, and the creditor is a creditor. Okay. So we credited things. So we will debit things and credit tiny, which is the correct credit entry. Because they said it was recorded in Tins account, I will just correct the account and I will not touch my creditor's control. But even if you touch it, the net effect will be zero. Okay, the net effect will be zero. Um, and let's move to the next one. So if the error is done in the debtor's ledger, you just debit or credit or debit or credit in the creditor's ledger, you just debit or credit but you don't touch the debtor's control and the creator's control. However, if it was done in the journal, it will touch the debtor's control and the creditor's control. But however you take it, um, the net effect will be zero. So I don't think it will be a big deal, okay? Um, let's move to the 21st. So we've got cash purchases of consumables for 3,600 was mistakenly recorded in the trading stock column in the CPJ and posted to the trading stock account to rectify the error. We have done this so many times. You will debit consumables and credit trading stock. Um, and the trading stock is a B, so not the hive. Is the balance sheet. The B stands for balance sheet or the statement of financial position. Uh, let me just correct it quickly there. Okay.
And when we move to 25, it says that a data R man was declared insolvent. We received 35 cents to the rent from his estate. His debt was 2,800. The balance must be written off. There to get your bad debts because that is the original amount that was owed by our man. Our man. We are going to take 2,800 and multiply it by how much is the percentage here? So you'll multiply it by 65. How did I get 65? I basically took 100 and I subtracted 35%. And um, let's check how much this will give me. So my bet that will be 1,820. I will debit bad debts and credit our man. Our man is a debtor. That is why we credit our man. Okay, our man. And that also affects our debtor's control on the credit side of your debtor's control. Let's go to the 29th. It says a credit note 900 was given to Omega Limited, was posted to Game Limited. So Omega Limited and Game Limited are debtors. We just debited the wrong person, which is Omega. Um, no, actually, it's a credit note. I'm thinking about the invoice now. We debited debtors' allowances, but we credited Omega Limited. So we're gonna debit Omega Limited and credit Game Limited because Game Limited is the one that owes us less. The reason why Game Limited owes us less is because they returned the goods okay um, and this is what we're gonna do here note that the debtors column will basically the net effect there will be zero um, um, and yeah it'll be zero it'll be zero that's why i said when you're given something like this please know that here they said omega to whatever they didn't say it was done in the debtor's ledger. However, I feel like the error was done in the debtor's ledger. You, the debit and the credit under debtor's control was unnecessary. However, if you did it, the net effect is just zero. To be safe, always do it because the net effect either way is zero. It will not affect the control account at all. Okay. On the 29th, it says the owner took goods of 150 for his personal use. So we debit trading stock now we debit drawings and credit to trading stock okay um, and that's what we're gonna have and you get your totals and that's it give yourself 13 minutes to complete this and check out the solutions Give yourself 17 minutes to complete this. Please know that if I'm moving too fast, you just play it in slow motion or you just pause to make sure that you complete it. These are just past papers, grade 10 past papers. Um, and these are the transactions here. Let's see. All right, that'll be it from me. Please know that instead of writing interest receivable, you can write interest income. And you need to remember interest on an asset is always income. Interest on an asset will always be income. Um, just remember that, okay?
try the last one. And check the solutions. All right. That'll be it with respect to the past papers relating to the general journal. I hope it helped you a lot. Please continue subscribing. Let your friends know about the channel. And keep watching. Um, if you need extra lessons, you can contact me on my email address or just check my details under descriptions. I normally charge 250 per hour. And thank you. Some of you have actually contacted me. Um, thank you. Thank you for being loyal to the channel. And obviously, um, thank you for being part of Mshuri Tutoring, where I just help you with accounting lessons one-on-one. -on -one. And unfortunately, I won't be doing maths anymore. I've got the names of maths teachers that can help you out there. And one accounting teacher that is based in Cape Town. Um, she is very, very good. That's why I put it there. And there's a lot. Okay. Um, so just contact me. And if you need any extra lessons and you want to do well in accounting, thank you. Thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. Hold on.